Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and today we are going to go over what to look for if you're in the market for a gas mask. Some pros and cons, some good options and some not so good options, uh, how to take care and decontaminate these. So to start out, the first thing you want to look for if you're in the market, uh, depending on your price range. So if you want to get a brand new mask, that is great. That's a good option, of course. Uh, there is a lot of reputable sources, military suppliers uh, out there, but they can be extremely pricey for a brand new uh, military issued ma gas mask. Like some of the MSA options out there are excellent. The Millennium is a great option too. You can pick those up used uh, for a lot less. But brand new, I believe that's about a three or four hundred dollar mask. And if you get it used, I know Commando Store or CommandoLand.com with a K, Commando Land with a K. I'll put a link down in the description. Has those? They just got those in, and uh, I believe they're under a hundred dollars used. So that's a good option. And also, as far as brands, uh, the Scott that makes this guy is a an excellent brand. Uh, Avon makes great options too. Uh, 3M does have some options, not as much CBRN uh, capable options, but they do have some full face and stuff like that, uh, as well as MSA. And if you are in the market for pretty much any current or in the past uh, decade or two uh, military issued mask, you really can't go too wrong with those. You might just want to do some research. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try to help. And also you can go over to uh, Guns and Stuff 93. He does excellent work with gas masks. He's very knowledgeable and helpful. So if you are in the market, I would suggest those three brands or possibly just any military issued or Israeli civilian even issued masks. The Israelis, uh, everyone in that country is required to have a mask. They give one out to everyone. There's a civilian version and a military. Both of them are good entry-level options, as well as Scott. If you get a used Scott mask, that's a good option as well. One misconception with uh, masks is that you have to get it in date, or it has to be at a certain date of manufacture for it to actually work, or it's expired and not worth anything. That's not really true in my opinion uh, and a lot of others because as long as the mask uh, is not compromised and it can keep a good seal and the material is in good shape, that mask should be just fine and uh, work sufficient with any uh, as long as you have the correct filters and, and a good filter system on it. So the main thing with looking at a mask is making sure it does fit you and have a good seal. A lot of masks have just uh, medium large as one option and then small so there's usually two uh, sizes and not just a small medium or large so usually it's a one size fits all unless you have a small face uh, so just keep that in mind as well that you do get the correct size uh, now as far as full face versus uh, each individual eye uh, that is a preference thing. I do and I am a big fan of full face masks because you will get a bigger field of view and vision. Uh, but as far as with these two eyelets on there, uh, I have found and heard that if you are planning on uh, shooting a rifle with one of these, it can be very difficult and mess up your vision with the curve of the lens. That can mess up your vision and make it really hard for you to get on your sights. Uh, with that mask. With this one in particular, the Scott M95, I have no issues and I've heard the same with a lot of other uh, masks that are designed with the two different separate eyelets that uh, there's not that huge curve and it doesn't throw you off where you can't get on your sights. Now also with getting on sights, uh, I feel this is a, a, an important thing for me as well when looking for a mask. There's typically two styles. There's one where you get the filter hanging off the bottom here right right here that can kind of get in the way uh, you could probably work around it but it could be a nuisance if you're trying to rifle uh, use a rifle and then also it would have there's some options where it just is on one specific side or the other so depending on if you are left or right-handed uh, keep that in mind now on this one and 
some options, you can either put it on one side or the other. That is what I recommend. Uh, you never know who's gonna have to wear your mask. So I would look for an option where you could either put the filter on one side or the other, put it on your off side that you're not gonna use to rif uh, use your rifle. That way it's not gonna get in your way. That is a big thing for me. Uh, it might not be so big for you, but uh, it is something to, that's noteworthy. Also, certain masks, especially newer production masks, are going to have uh, drinking systems. This one actually does not. It does have the capability, but did not come with it, and they're hard to find. So if that is a big thing for you, if you're looking for a, a filtration, a water, I'm sorry, a water uh, port and, and hose for you to drink while wearing your mask, this one doesn't have it. A lot don't, but some do. And uh, that's just a cool option. You could buy a special canteen for it, so that way, or you could have it set up with a Camelback, and uh, that way you could easily drink water while wearing this. I don't really feel that I need that because I hope that if I need to use this, it's not gonna be for an extended period of time. So uh, I don't see myself wearing it long enough to really need that, but it is a great option if you're looking. Other ones, if you wear prescriptions, they will have a little, like on the inside here, they'll have a little tab uh, for you to be able to put uh, specialized lenses in there because if you are wearing uh, prescription or any type of sunglasses or glasses, you're not gonna get a good seal and that defeats the purpose of having one of these. So that is something to keep in mind. I do suggest getting a pair of contacts. Uh, if you want to go the route of wearing this and need that, but that is an option. So uh, besides that on the inside of the mask, you do have certain ones like this guy. I don't know if, if you could really see it here, but there is this separator piece. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna separate you from breathing uh, in the mask. And you could see it here. It's gonna make it so that you aren't uh, fogging up the mask. It's going to keep your, your exhalation uh, going out through the exhalation valve down below and just separate it. So that's huge. I would make sure that you have that if you're looking for a mask. And keep in mind a lot of older masks, uh, especially some of the older uh, USSR Russian style masks are going to not be very effective compared to some of the newer ones. Some of them actually have asbestos inside the mask. It's not very common, but I would just suggest probably stick to like the past 1990s and up production uh, dates if you want to get a mask you really want to rely your and rely on for your life. So uh, old 40 millimeter uh, Soviet filters, stay away from those as well. They pretty much all of them contain uh, asbestos and it will save your life uh, in certain situations, but uh, you're, you, that's horrible for you to breathe in. So no matter how cheap they are, don't get those filters, don't breathe in through those filters. They are very bad for you. They've been tested over and over and every time they have come up having asbestos. So that's kind of the basics, you know, you could get into harness and stuff like that, but most of them they're gonna have kind of standard harnesses. And once you narrow down what you're looking for and you find one, just do a little research. There should be a ton of reviews out on each mask uh, and information that'll show some pros and cons and drawbacks if there is any. So just keep that in mind, but as long as it's a pretty recent production date, and I'm not a professional, but this is, from everyone I've spoken to that knows about this stuff, and this is how I feel. I'm very confident in carrying this. This was uh, made in 96, but the rubber's in great shape. Everything seals up perfect, and I would trust my life to this. Uh, as far as 40 millimeter canisters, there is a lot out there, and it can be very overwhelming with the information out there. Uh, what I would just say as a good standard, if you're getting this to protect yourself from chemical, biological, radi uh, radiation, and nuclear, uh, go in that order and get a CBRN, uh, chemical, biological, radi radioactive, uh, nuclear, and get a CBRN filter. Uh, another good rating is uh, ABEC P3. That's another good system. The CBN are great, but they won't uh, block out radiation. So CBRN's kind of up here. As far as good cheap filters that are available, right now it's 2020. 
Um, I would suggest Myra, M-I-R-A, go to their website and they have the uh, Dot Pro 320s for 40 bucks. The life on those is uh, seven and a half years and those will cover pretty much anything life throws at you. Uh, they're color coded if you really want to get into detail. There's color coding and uh, some diagrams out there and stuff so you can really read into it for yourself. But I think that's a great baseline for a filter that you can pay extra and get their 20 year life uh, filters. And I believe those are like 80 bucks. But for seven and a half year lifespan, uh, $40, those are great. Another thing to keep in mind for filters is that uh, <clears throat> for your lifespan, once you open them, that's going to be about eight hours at the most. If you're filtering out a lot of stuff uh, and there's a lot going on, it's gonna be less. You're gonna be able to tell because it's gonna start uh, being harder to breathe you might start smelling things. You shouldn't be able to smell anything if you're wearing one of those filters. A great test to do is put one on, make sure you have a good seal, do your seal checks. And uh, to do a seal check, you would put this on, tighten it all up, cover your uh, inhalation where your 40 mil can would go, cover that up, suck in, it should suck in. Uh, also cover that up and blow out, it should be able to blow out and that's pretty much your test and do that with the filter the same way just covering the, uh, the uh, input on the filter. So um, for the 40 mil filters, they're gonna last about eight hours at the most, so keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about a good starting point for, for masks and filters, I believe. I, I don't believe we missed anything too major there. That's a great starting point because I know this can be overwhelming. And it's easy to just go out and get a, a mask. You, I would suggest also, one last thing about the masks is make sure they take 40 millimeter. Uh, don't get a proprietary or anything like that. You can get a 60 that takes 60 mil threads and get an adapter for probably like 10 bucks uh, that adapts to 40. But NATO, the standard NATO filter that's available and gonna be easy to find are 40 millimeters. So just go that route and call it a day. Now, as far as sanitation, if you're decontaminating one of these, you can get 70% rubbing alcohol, put it in a spray bottle. As you take this off, pull off your harness and just pull it away from your face, you know? So, so don't mess around, try to pull it over, just pull it off off your face. Also, you can use uh, rubbing alcohol if needed. Um, I would kind of just go that route. Uh, and also you can, uh, if you just need a regular cleaning, pretty much you can clean these in, in uh, soapy water and then rinse them off. So you're good to go on that. So that's about it, guys. Thanks. And I appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions, chime down below. If you want to add anything, chime down below. Always is always. Hit the like, subscribe, and share options. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. I hope this helped you out.